Hello again. Welcome back to week 30 of year four of the Religious Education Initiative. This is day two. We're continuing through the third sermon on prayer of St. Theophon the Recluse from the Path of Prayer. So last time we saw St. Theophon speak of how genuine and unceasing prayer is actually true prayer, and how we labor towards attaining this through the discipline of the daily rule of spoken prayer and the practice of mental prayer, turning our minds toward the things of God at all times through the day. At the same time, he reminded us very clearly that unceasing prayer is not the mechanical or automatic result of such disciplines. It is rather a gift of God. It is essential that we labor for it because this is how we turn our desire toward the Lord and ask for this gift and blessing. But it is always God's gift to those who receive it. This time he'll describe this in more detail. He says, We pray morning and evening. The night, be the time between is long. However, ardently we pray. If we turn to God only at these times in the whole day and night, it will all become scattered again. Then, when the time for prayer comes round, the soul will again be as cold and empty as before. Even if we pray fervently, if we then keep cooling down and becoming distracted, what profit is there in it? We just create and destroy, create and destroy again. It is no more than empty labor. But if we now put ourselves to the task of not only accomplishing our rule of prayer with attention and feeling morning and night, but more, of practicing reflection on divine things, of turning every action to the glory of God, of frequently appealing to God from our heart with short prayerful exclamations. Then these long intervals between morning and evening and between evening and morning prayers will be filled with frequent appeals to God and with frequent prayerful actions. Although this is not unceasing prayer, it will be repeated often in such a way that the more often it is repeated, the closer it will grow to unceasing prayer. This work is an inevitable and necessary transitional stage on the way to the achievement of unceasing prayer. If you carry out this work every day, constantly and without tiring, you can see for yourself what must happen in your soul. From meditation on the divine, the fear of God will be born. This fear of God is already an accomplishment. It is already an achievement, rather. In it, we understand the everlasting perfection of the actions of God, comprehending them through both thought and feeling. By turning every action to the glory of God, we will bear within ourselves the constant remembrance of God. Remembering whatever we do, that we are constantly in the presence of God, we will actually be walking in the presence of God. Finally, by frequent appeals to God, in other words, by often evoking reverent feelings toward God in our hearts, we will give birth to the constant, warm, and loving utterance in our heart of the sweet name of our Lord. In turn, this will inevitably kindle in our hearts the spiritual fire about which I spoke earlier. This inner fire brings with it a profound peace, constant watchfulness, and life-giving courage. With it, we will enter into that state which is the highest we can aspire to on earth, a true foretaste of the state of bliss awaiting us all in the future. This is a true realization of what the Apostle described when he said, Your life is hid with Christ in God. Now it's funny reading that because in the prelude I was summing up last week by saying, you know, he talks about how this is something we have to work for, something we have to strive for, and yet it is a gift of God. But the way he describes this is, is really almost exactly as it is something that we work for as you know as surely as as we attain muscle by exercising muscles by lifting weights uh in the same way growth in prayer as he describes it here is achieved and yet he says elsewhere this is god's gift to us so what really is happening here is we can identify we can see what the trajectory of our state of mind, our being, our desire, our yearning, our love is as we attend to the discipline of, of our morning and evening prayer and to that constant remembrance of God throughout the day. We can see that our whole state of being will shift its orientation away from the things of this world and 
towards the Lord himself. But, but that gift of unceasing prayer is, is not just something that we can build up as a habit in ourselves. Uh, there is also that, there is that grace of God meeting with us. And yet, we can describe it here in, simply in the terms of what we do to work towards it, how we strive and struggle and lay aside other cares. Um, it doesn't make it less of God's gift, but also it doesn't mean we can simply wait for God to do something for us and in the meantime carry on and do whatever we want. And that is maybe the point that we should mention. In all of these things, the spoken prayer rule, the remembrance of God, uh, the offering of every action in our lives to the Lord, right? There is an assumption, and that is that we are laying aside, we are rejecting the sins towards which we are so easily tempted. We are not quenching the life of the Spirit in the course of our daily life by by turning to the pleasures and distractions and sins that are always offered to us in the world. Uh, this renunciation of, of the pleasures of this life necessarily uh, underpins all of this effort. And all of this effort also underpins that rejection, to be clear. It's really hard to simply not do bad things, right? This ceaseless prayer, the discipline of daily prayer, and the constant remembrance of God, this is how we, turning away from the things of this world, turn towards the Lord at every moment in our lives. We are striving to open the door, and the Lord will enter in. So, we'll see how he continues that next week, but for now... God bless you. We'll see you again shortly for day three.